Hi, Renee. Begin by cutting your strips three to three and a half inches <coughs> wide, depending on um, the size of the quilt you're going to do. Big quilts, uh, three and a half. Little quilts, three. Cross grain for small pieces, straight of grain for larger. The salvages and um, press in half. I usually use steam or um, magic spray sizing or some breast press. So my strips are uh, ironed in half. So and put those aside. Then what I want to do now from the back side, and you can use whatever marking tool you want to use. The one with the finest point would best be best. And you want to do two things. One, you want to measure out of your corner. I always measure three-fourths because of the batting that I use. And I'm going to use a, a marker sharpie just so I think you can see it if this uh, normally I would use something else that will go away but since this is going to be uh, under the facing it doesn't really matter three-fourths depends on what size your or what the layers you have in your quilt so if you don't have what I have which is a top a back a layer of batting and a layer of 35 percent wool 65 percent felt then you need to make some adjustments. You need to find your magic number. And the only way you can do that is by making little test sandwiches. A little um, to do, start at half an inch, um, go to three fourths, uh, maybe go down to three eighths, um, depending. Then you wanna make a diagonal line across each corner. So you wanna do that on all four corners. I'm gonna go do that. Then when I get through doing that, I will go to the sewing machine and stitch across this line with a shorter than normal stitch, like a 1.5, go across and then come back. And then um, when I get through doing that, I'll be back with you. I've stitched across the corner and I would do this with uh, as close to the value and color of your fabric as possible. This is as close as I could get because I don't have any beige in the house, but anyway. And this is from the back side. The next thing you want to do is to pick out all the stitches that are in your piece above this stitch line. That's why you needed the stitch line, because once you take these quilting stitches out, you don't want them to ravel back beyond that point. And that's why you need to do a close quilting stitch, a close uh, sewing stitch, sewing across here. I'll be back when I get them all picked out. You want to take out all the stitches that are in the corner, and you want to be able to separate all the layers. So that's the top, that's the batting. This is the felt, and this is the backing. It probably would be better if you get in the habit of taking the stitches out from the front so that you are always knowing that this first layer you're going to pull back. If you do this from the back, you're going to make a mistake. So you want to cut it across right above the stitch line. And you want to do that on all four corners. When I get done, I'll be back. The thing I do is um, I draw my, um, my seam allowance. And I use a ruler, and I do it from the back of the quilt. And I generally do it with um, something that will go away with heat, like the pilot pins. But for this one, I'm going to use a Sharpie pen with a fine point. Make sure you got a good fine point um, mainly because you won't be able to see that line and it wasn't won't matter because it'll be 
under um, in your facing. So you want to draw that line across all four sides. In front, you want to lay your strips of the first strip of your facing along the lift of this quilt. You want to match the raw edges of the strip against the raw edges of your quilt. And you can cut it off exactly to the length of your quilt. If you need to put a few pins in, in it to hold it, then you don't need to pin really close. You're just pinning it in. And you just want to keep your pin heads back away from the edge because you're going to be stitching this from the back of the quilt and you won't be able to see where those pin heads are to avoid um, your pressure foot on your sewing machine from hitting them or your needle running over them. You don't want to do that. So you can just pin it enough to get it into the layers, the first layers. It doesn't have to get pinned all the way through. So you want to do this top and bottom. Okay, that's been stitched. You can remove the pins. And the next thing you want to do is um, with a steam iron or a little mist, you want to press these facings back. Then you'll go to the sewing machine and you'll understitch along this edge. Do it with um, as close to matching thread as you can find. I'm going to see if I can find something, find the thread that I actually quilted this with. Okay. You'll do that for this side and the other side. I'll be back. I am going to use a pilot pin to do the markings because I'll be marking from the front and I want the marking to go away. Um, just from experience, because I know from the layers that I use, again, um, that I need to mark three-fourths from the where this seam is before I start my next piece. So I'll put my marker there and I'll mark the... Well, my pen is dying. Okay. I'll use a new one. Uh, three-fourths from here and three-fourths from the other side. You want to take your facing with a nice squared off edge end and you want to lay it here and again, pin it back away from the edge where you'll be sewing, because again, you'll be sewing this down from the back side. Those seam marks are still back there. You want to cut it off um, exactly to that length. This may change depending on, as I said, what kind of batting or what kind of uh, stuff constitutes your sandwich. Do some pinning. Uh, do it on both sides. Stitch it from the back. And when I've done that, I'll be back. I'm back. Um, I've top stitched along the edges of our understitched, which is the right term uh, for this on both ends. Now the, you have to turn back your short sections first. I use a glue stick 
I use the Avery. It says it's permanent. It's also acid-free, so it shouldn't hurt your quilts. Um, if you're doing a quilt that you know you're going to wash and you really want it to wash out, then you can use the um, Avery brand disappearing blue purple one because it does say it washes out of clothes or clo you know, clothing, I guess for kids' use or something like that. Most of the other fabric glues on the market are just aren't strong enough, in my opinion, to hold what you need to do, especially when you put this felt layer in here. Anyway, you want to put glue all the way across. I usually don't glue more than a 12 uh, inch or one foot section, just because I want the glue to stay moist. The other thing you need is some kind of clips. I usually use binder clips. Um, I usually use the half inch as well as the little half, um, this is three-fourths, and then the half inch one. They do have these little really cute ones on the market now. These are expensive. You get like 12 for five, six bucks. You can get 50 of these for that, that cost. So if you're doing a really big quilt, for money's sake, you're probably better off with the binder clips. Okay, so what you want to do is turn your pieces back. You know, you can turn them back a lot, but I just kind of go over the edge. Um, a lot you don't want to do. I just I forget that. But anyway. Um, stay consistent. across the um, whole piece as far as your turn back and this will come with practice um, if you've done other facings before you, you probably know how much to sort of turn back give it a good finger press um, as you're doing this so that the glue makes contact with part, uh, the back part of the quilt. Okay. Put the clips all the way across. You can put them into this little area because you've put glue there because you do want that to stay consistently the same turn back. Once you've done this on both ends, you need to sit down and do a whip stitch close, um, of this end to attach it to the quilt. You just need to go through the backing and into probably the felt layer. And you want to hand stitch across this and do a whip stitch to hold this in place on this side. I will do both ends and I'll be back with you in a little bit. After you get through doing the hand stitching, you want to give this a really good press I use steam um, from my iron, and if that's your iron doesn't make enough steam, then go ahead and um, apply a little moisture with um, some plain water um, and a mister. Do that on both ends. Now this is probably what you've been waiting for, is how to turn this in to give yourself a really good corner. You don't want to apply some glue. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to do this little section so you can see what I'm talking about. You need to put some glue there and some glue. I'll put it about three inches out from the corner. Now this is straight across. You don't want to fold this straight across. You want to fold this a little bit off of straight. See the glue is going to hold it there. And what you're doing is then turning it. Like that. There's some stray threads. You can take um, 